uh, continue talking about the supersymmetric. I hope you all did your homework. Okay, so um, today we're going to make contact with uh, localization and uh, this morning's uh, lecture by Francesco. So I'm going to start by computing so the expectation value of the two one half BPS with some loops that I introduced yesterday, which were the, the infinite straight line and the circle. And uh, so we want to compute, so we take the representation to be the fundamental one. So we want to compute this uh, object. And uh, we're going to start computing this imperturbation theory because I think it's a very nice uh, uh, exercise where you gain lots of intuition. And moreover, in this very simple case of n equal to four superior males, it's an exercise in which you see a connection between the matrix model and really Feynman diagram. So it's a, it's a very nice uh, uh, setup. <clears throat> okay, so how do we compute this object? So we, we expand the exponents. Okay, and so <coughs> we use, uh, so the trace, so we have exponent to something, so the first term is one. So we get the trace of one, <coughs> which is an n by n matrix, so you get n, which cancels with this one over n, so the first term is one. And then you get uh, the second term, which would be linear in the fields, is zero because, uh, so these are traceless matrices. <coughs> and then you have to worry about this uh, path ordering symbol. So when you expand the exponents, so higher terms in the Taylor expansion uh, are going to have more integrals and you have to order the integrals one after the other. And uh, you can use this formula that uh, I think should be familiar from uh, a similar situation, which is when you solve a uh, Dyson equation and you have a, you have a similar issue. So, so you have one over n factorial from the Taylor expansion of the exponential, but ordering of this guy, and this is ds1, dsn, but now the integrals are ordered and I can pick one ordering like this one. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so very good. So now let's go to, let's compute this guy and we have that this is one plus one over n trace TATB integral S1 bigger than S2 DS1 DS2 and then you have some integrand. Okay, and this integrand Let me call it combined propagator. And when I'm going to do Feynman diagrams, I'm going to denote it by a wavy line. <coughs> and what is this? This is uh, This is this guy. <coughs> okay, and I, I, I hope the notation is obvious. So x1 means x mu of s1, and x2 means x of s2. <clears throat> okay, so I need to compute this guy. So I can go to Feynman gauge 
And uh, these propagators in Feynman gauge become like this. So this is the scalar propagator and uh, the uh, vector propagator is, uh, is essentially the same up to the index structure. So this is why this gauge is nice. So you have uh, delta mu nu, delta AB, and x minus y squared. Okay, so I use these two propagators and then this, uh, this uh, combined propagator gives me delta AB g m mil squared over 4 pi squared. And I got x1, x2 minus the product divided by x1 minus x2 squared. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what appears at the first non-trivial order in the expansion. Okay, so now let's evaluate this uh, combined propagator in the two cases that we had yesterday. So uh, we had the infinite line, which was just x4 equal to s, and then everything else was zero. So you see that you have uh, essentially one minus one. So this combined propagator is zero. So you don't have a propagator, essentially, in, 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 your, in, your, uh, in your example. So you can immediately see that uh, w the expectation value for the line is going to be one. So this is a trivial expectation value. It's not very interesting. And essentially, you can argue that this is going to be valid at any order in perturbation theory, essentially, because you don't have a propagator, right? So <coughs> you can evaluate trivially this guy. So now let's, uh, let's look at the, at, the, at the circle. So for the circle, you know that x1 dot times x2 dot is equal to x1 times x2. So this, uh, this uh, uh, functional dependence on the coordinates becomes 1 minus, so this guy, Yes. So the, the, line, the line is trivial, but what happens then if I have this infinite line and then it comports with me also have this conformal symmetry and I would say, ah, it's actually. Yeah, yeah, wait. I, 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 I'm going to come to that. OK, so this is uh, 1 minus x1 times x2. So this is 1 half. So this is, I, I'm just expanding the, the denominator, and then I got x1 squared and x2 squared are one because of a circle. <coughs> so this is, uh, this is it. So this is constant. So it's amazing that uh, this particular combination, which is uh, uh, due to supersymmetry, so it, it is this particular uh, structure of this uh, propagators give you, gives you a constant. So then you, you see that uh, uh, this w for the circle so is no longer trivial. It's 1 over n trace ta tb integral from 0 to 2 pi ds1, integral from 0 to s1, ds2. And then you have just this constant thing, which is uh, 8 pi squared. OK? So you, you can evaluate this. And, uh, and this is 1 plus lambda over 8 plus dots, dots, dots. So indeed, we see it's non-trivial, although, as Jesse was alluding to, the line and the circle are related by an inversion, which is a conformal transformation that I can do in the theory. So I have got some line, I can invert it, and I got a circle, and I would expect it to be the same thing, but uh, it's not because of some anomaly in the boundary conditions at infinity. 
OK? So there is an interpretation in terms of anomalies for this, for this fact. But anyway, so this is a fact that uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's non-trivial. OK? What's but, uh, Sorry, yeah, I, I should have said it. So lambda is gigan mills squared times n. This is also called tooth coupling. So what we do in n equal to four superior mills, so we start from a theory which has gigan mills square and the rank of a gauge group. And we prefer to express things in terms of lambda and n. So you, you, you change the parameterization of, uh, of, uh, of the parameters because it's, uh, this is the relevant combination in the so-called tooth limit. So this is the, and in orography, this is the useful parameterization to use. <coughs> okay? Good, so now we, so we, we see this very simple computation at uh, second order. Let's go to higher orders to, to, I mean, we have a constant propagator in the end. So we should try to compute as much as possible. So net higher loops. Um, so at next order, <coughs> we have uh, so uh, order lambda squared. We have different uh, we have different uh, kinds of uh, diagrams. So let me do the diagrams like this. So this is the the Wilson loop circle. I denote it by a circle, and now I got propagators connecting it. So at, uh, at next order, we have, for example, these two propagators. Okay, and then there would be something with a crossing, but I exclude that something with a crossing by taking the large and limit, so I'm taking the planar diagrams only limit, so I don't, I don't consider crossings. So this is a possibility, which is, so you see one, one single propagator is order lambda, so now we have two propagators is order lambda squared, but there is another possibility, right, because we, we can have internal vertices, like a renormalization of a propagator, and we can have a three vertex in the middle, which are also lambda squared. So these guys, Okay, so first of all, let me notice that in this case, of course, everything is, is UV finite. The propagator is constant. It's even better than, than finite. All right, so we don't really worry about divergences because essentially, in, so in, a, in a purely uh, gauge field with some loop, you would have a linear divergence, but this linear divergence gets canceled by the scalar contribution. Okay, and this guy, these guys, however, are not uh, are, are divergent. You need to you need to regularize them, and uh, and you can do that. You do something which is called dimensional reduction scheme, which is a way. It's like dimensional regularization preserving supersymmetry. You can do that. Okay, so you you you, you regularize, and then you 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 find that when d equal to four, the dimensional space time is equal to four. Actually, the two guys cancel one with the other. So this was a computation done in uh, in zero 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 thirty fifty five, which is a famous paper by Erickson, Semenov, and Zarembo, <coughs> where they computed the expectation value of a, of a, so this is. Erickson, Semenov, and Zarembo. Okay, nice. So what they did, so this was pre-localization, of course, and uh, this is where essentially the, the, the conjecture about uh, uh, this, uh, this Wilson loops originates, uh, that namely there is a matrix model computing them. So in this paper, they decide, okay, so they, they, they conjecture, okay, so we have this observation at uh, order lambda squared. Let's assume that the cancellation of uh, diagrams with uh, loops or vertices is going to con continue to any order in perturbation theory. So let's assume that for some reason, mysterious at the time, only ladders contribute, and in this limit, only planar ladders contribute. 
OK, so they conjecture in this paper uh, diagrams with vertices will continue canceling. OK, and then let's see what happens. And uh, then we only have essentially pr constant propagators for planar ladders, and we can really compute everything, right? Because now we have that this guy is going to be equal to 1 plus this guy plus this guy. OK, so this is order lambda. This is order lambda squared. Now we have to go to order lambda cube only with planar ladders. But we have two possibilities. We have this guy here, but we have a, this guy here is topologically different, right? And so on. So at order n, we have what? We have giga mills squared times 4 pi squared to the n. So this, this is the, the factor that was coming from, from the combined propagator, if you remember. Then we had 1 over 2, again, to the n. This was the constant piece. Then we have 2 pi to the 2n, 2n factorial. And then we have n over 2 to the n, which in total gives you lambda to the n to the n to n factorial. So again, so this, I, I explained where these two guys come from. This guy comes from integrating so these guys. So this is just the measure of the ordered integral at order n. And this comes from uh, repeated applications of, uh, of this, OK? Where of uh, of uh, uh, normalization of the gauge theory generators. OK, so now what do we need to do? We just need, so now we know that this expectation value of the circle is just going to be the sum from n from 0 to infinity of this factor, lambda to the n, 4 to the n, 2n factorial, times how many diagrams appear at any order. Let me call this factor cn. OK, so it's a combinatorial problem now. So I tell you, when you have only one ladder, OK, we, we, we can see you have one guy. At, when you have two ladders, you have also one guy. With three ladders, you are going to have two guys, two, two possible diagrams contributing. And then you go on, of course, the number increases. But we need to compute how it increases. So we need to understand what's the end. And then we can just resum this, uh, this, uh, this series, and we get an exact result, assuming again that uh, vertices will continue canceling at any order. Okay. So again, it was a conjecture that was essentially proven by localization uh, uh, a few years late, uh, uh, later, right, in 2007. <clears throat> Good, OK, so now let's, uh, so let's count. So Cn is the number of diagrams uh, uh, with non-crossing ladders, OK, with, with n non-crossing ladders, OK? And uh, there is some, uh, you can easily set up a recursion relation to, to, to extract this Cn. So uh, let, let me denote it by this. So you have n plus 1. So you have a generic uh, ladder diagram with n plus 1 ladders. And you can always see that you can write it in this way. So you, you have a blob with k, a blob with n minus k, so the total now is n. And then I got some extra ladder going, going like this. So I, I mean, the, the easiest way to, to realize that this is true, I mean, just, 
just write down a few cases for low n and, and, and check that this is, this is always going to be true, okay? So then you have that cn plus one, if I write down this pictorial equation in formulas, is sum k from zero to n, cn minus k, ck, and then I, I need a step of the, uh, of the recursion, which is c zero equal to one. So I, I know that when I got uh, zero, I got only one contribution from, from zero ladders. Okay, so now you can, you, can, uh, you can introduce a generating function to solve this recursion relation. So introduce f of z equal to some n from n to infinity, cn z to the n. And then, uh, uh, so this equation, you can check that becomes f of z squared equal to f of z minus one over z with f of zero equal to one, so I, you can re-express this in terms of this equation. And uh, <coughs> you, can, uh, you can solve it, now it's, it's a quadratic equation, you get f of z is one minus square root of one minus four z over two z. So of course, I mean, I would have a plus sign and a minus sign, and I fix the minus sign in a way that uh, when z equal to zero, this is a finite. Uh, so, of course, z equal to zero, you need to have a finite result. Actually, it has to be one. So you, you need to you need to, to select the minus sign. So now you can you can write this equation as an infinite uh, series. So this is two uh, n factorial n plus one factorial n factorial c to the n. So now you immediately understand that this guy is cn. So this sum here becomes sum of n to n factorial, n plus one factorial, n factorial, lambda to the n for n to n factorial. Okay, you plug into Mathematica and you get two over square root of lambda, Bessel function E1, square root of lambda, okay? So this is some modified Bessel function. And so now let's take stock and so let's remind, so what did we get here? We get a result which was valid for n equal to infinity because we were only uh, considering non-crossing ladders, but is valid for any value of lambda. So this is exact in lambda. Okay, so this was uh, the conjecture in this paper that uh, the expectation value would be, would be like this. And in fact, we, can, we, can, we are going to see on Thursday that there is an immediate check that uh, this is the right result. But without localization? Without localization. I'm not... Uh, so, yeah, using, using holography. Um, but anyway, so this is, this is the result. And now, now uh, I, want, I want to revisit this, uh, this uh, computation uh, using localization. Even if you there's no, 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 there is no holography, but what I said is that you can check that this is, I, I don't want to anticipate too much because I would have to explain how to check it, but so we can see on Thursday that you can check the strong coupling limit of this function using holography. So this is of course a, a, a piece of evidence for, for, for the, for the for the fact that this conjecture is, is reasonable, right? And correct. Okay, so any questions so far? So this was pure uh, perturbation theory and uh, combinatorics. And now let's uh, uh, redo this computation using, using localization. And so this is when I'm going to connect with uh, today's lecture by Francesco. So 1.5. 
So the one-half VPS circle from a matrix model. OK, so th there is already some intuition that uh, we can build out of this computation. So first of all, we had, uh, we had uh, uh, an expansion in Feynman diagrams in which propagators were constant. So we are going to suspect that the relevant quantity is going to be some constant field, some zero mode. And then there were no vertices, effectively, because they cancel. So then it's probably going to be a Gaussian zero mode, so a zero mode with some Gaussian action. And uh, so this would be a matrix model with some Gaussian action. So this would be a Gaussian matrix model, right? So we, we, we suspect this. But in order to, to so we, and this was conjecture already in that paper, but OK, so in order to see that rigorously, we have to really use uh, the localization machinery. Can I just ask, which, which, which anomaly was behind the fact that the result for the straight line is different from the cell? Yeah, so you have a, so you're mapping the point at infinity to a, to a finite point, And this introduces an anomaly that which, which anomaly? Where, where, where? Which it's like a conformal anomaly that uh, Drucker and Gross I, I, um, um, uh, elucidated how it contributes to, to, to this discrepancy between the line and the circle. Yeah. OK, so now what, what are we going to do? We're going to put n equal to 4 super young males on, on, uh, on S4. OK, so we, we saw this morning uh, um, how it works. So, OK, so we have a compact manifold. And then there was some fermionic symmetry. And uh, uh, so the Q used for localization uh, is the same Q such that Q of W circle is 0. So W circle uh, is, uh, is an operator annihilated by, 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 by this particular Q that I'm using to construct this localizing action that uh, Francesco was talking about. It depends on how your circle is on the sphere. Yeah, so, I'm, so I, I take my circle to be the equator of the sphere. So this is uh, the one half BPS circle is equal to the equator. And if you remember, Q was some fermionic symmetry squaring to a bosonic symmetry, and the bosonic symmetry is precisely the isometry along this circle. So I, 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 I'm moving in, in, in this direction, OK? So Q squared is essentially d d phi. So the, 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 the isometry along this, uh, this, this equator. OK, then <coughs> what you have to uh, so and then so we, we saw that there was this uh, uh, there was this uh, computation of a d, z, d, d, t. So you, you start with an action, you deform it, and then you see that uh, the path integral does, uh, does, the, 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 the z does not depend on, 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 on this parameter that you're using for deforming. But the same, as uh, Francesco was saying, the same uh, uh, argument goes through if instead of adding z, you get w, you compute the expectation value of a w, which is also uh, annihilated by the q, right? So the same thing goes through. So I can, I, can, I can do the same thing. I can take t equal to infinity. You do this very violent deformation. And essentially, you have a localization on the, on the saddle point. So <clears throat> what happens is that, uh, so it, it, didn't, it didn't do it for n equal to 4 super young males. But uh, uh, the result of localization is that so you, you have to solve the equation QV equal to 0. So you have, you have to solve for the localization locus of the path integral. And uh, so if you do it for n equal to 4 super young males, you find that this QV equal to 0 is a sum of squares, OK? So you have to solve for this equation, which is a sum of squares. And then you, 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 you see that the only thing that survives in this sum of squares is a, is a zero mode of the scalar uh, appearing 
in the in the Wilson loop circle. If you remember, there was there was a scalar appearing there, so that uh, uh, let me call the zero mode big M, like matrix. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, if the Wilson loop is uh, invariant under that Q. Under that, so is that yeah, that I'm picking, I'm picking, so it turns out that uh, the, the BRST operator that you're using for, so the, the Q that you're using for localization is the same that, that kills the Wilson loop. So the, is, the Wilson loop is invariant under that. So you can, this is why you can, you can redo, you can, sorry? In this case. In, in this case, so, so you can, you can, you can redo the same, the same analysis. Okay, so the, uh, let, let me tell you what happens. So, uh, so the, the partition function now becomes uh, dm e to minus, I'm going to write it down and then I'm going to tell you where it comes from, trace of m squared. So this is, uh, so the original action doesn't have a, a mass term for the scalars, but when you put it on the, on the sphere, on the S4, you get a, a coupling of the, of, the, of the scalars to the curvature of the sphere, which in, in the uh, appropriate units is given by, essentially by this combination here. And this is necessary to preserve supersymmetry after you put the theory on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the sphere, okay? So this is, uh, this is the, uh, uh, Um, this is the, parti the, the partition function, okay, Z. Okay, now similarly, so now we have to understand, okay, what, what is the insertion that we have to put into this partition function in order to compute the Wilson loop? And uh, so remember the Wilson loop was uh, one over the dimension of a representation, trace RP exponent I A mu dx mu plus, let's say, phi one. Okay, so the, the gauge field on the localization locus is, uh, is zero, so we don't have this guy. This guy becomes the zero mode, m, so it becomes constant, so now the integral just gives me two pi. So what I need to insert is one over dimension of a representation, trace r, p, uh, no longer p, I don't need a p anymore, because it's constant, so E exponent two pi M. <coughs> so this is, this is my insertion. Also, the important comment is that this morning we had a super determinant that was coming from the, from the uh, uh, fluctuation around, around the phi zero, Francesco called it, so there was a phi hat Right, that was giving rise to a one loop determinant. For n equal to four superior males, because of the large amount of supersymmetry, you have an exact cancellation between the numerator and the denominator of a super determinant, so you get one. So this is why you don't have anything here. So this is, I can type times one. And so the only thing that really survives is the classical action, okay? This is not always the case. You can, for example, consider different theories like n equal to two or n equal to two star or ABJM theories in three dimensions. In that case, this guy is, no, is not one and it gives you a, 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 a contribution. Okay, okay so, um, for, so I, I, I want to emphasize this thing that this, this analysis, again, does not rely on picking a particular representation so it's valid for any representation. So right now, let's focus on the fundamental representation because we want to reproduce that result that we obtained for the fundamental representation in perturbation theory. But you could have other representations. In fact, uh, in uh, exercise four, you can consider a representation which is asymmetric of rank K or anti-symmetric of rank K. And essentially, it's a guided exercise on how to do that. Okay. Yes? So in general, the one loop determinant will give you a deformation to the matrix model? If you it, it gives you. Or it's, it's more complicated. 
Well, I'm, I mean, you can think of it. So in the, in the language that we are going to use in terms of forces between eigenvalues, it, give, it, it will give you extra force pieces so between eigenvalues. Yeah, you can exponent. Of the action. Yeah, yeah, you, you take this, whatever you get here, you, get, you, you write it as exponent of a log. And then you put it here, it's like, a, it's like a potential for the eigenvalues. So it's always some function of n that you end up Yeah, with. yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. Just a comment, I don't see this matrix is n by n. Yeah. So originally, the scalar was in the adjunct. Yes. So this n by n, what are the, it's just a, N square uh, components of what? Because yeah, so you, so you start with, a, so the, the scalar is in the same multiplet as the gauge field, so it's also in the adjoint. It's an N by N matrix. Okay, and uh, it has N eigenvalues, and so this is, this, is, this is it. So I don't know what is the question. The question is, when you, when you take another representation. Yeah, when you take another representation, I can give you, I can give you a, a uh, I didn't write it here. So if you want to take another representation operatorially, what you are going to do is to take sum over the weights. So you have a representation for any gauge group. It doesn't need to be SUN like we are focusing on right now. So you take the sum over the weights. So E to the trace, let's say trace in the representation R of E to 2 pi M. Is sum over the weights of a representation times the degeneracy of that weight e to two pi weight evaluated in m. So I mean, there is some character formula that you apply and tells you what what is the insertion that you have to do. In the exercise four, we are essentially going to insert a generating function for the symmetric and anti-symmetric representation, and uh, I tell you what what is the insertion to 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 to, to, to put. Okay, so. Uh, Um, okay, so the, the very nice thing about this example, which is Gaussian, is that uh, uh, you have a Gaussian measure and you can apply uh, something called orthogonal polynomials. I mean, the method of orthogonal polynomials. And uh, uh, you can solve these things exactly. Okay, so, so now, now we know that this is, this is mathematically Precise. So we, we know that this is what we want to compute, this guy. Okay, so it's, a, it's, a, it's this insertion in this Gaussian matrix model. So we, this, we know by localization that this is the right computation to do. We don't need to assume cancellation of, because this is what comes out of localization. So this you can compute it exactly in N and lambda, so you can get an exact result. And uh, uh, I guide you through this computation in exercise three of a problem set. Okay, so I. <clears throat> exactly for finite n. Yeah, finite n. Any value of n, any value of lambda. In, in, in this perturbative expansion, we did it for large n, but you don't need to do that. You can be more general than that. You can get finite n. And okay, the result is some Laguerre polynomial. <coughs> associated Laguerre polynomial that you can, you can obtain. And actually it's quite easy. It's just some algebraic manipulation. You have determinants and uh, you use orthogonal polynomials. So it's going to be Hermite polynomials because the Hermite polynomials are orthogonal with respect to the Gaussian measure. So it's, uh, it's actually very simple integrals to do. But here, I don't want to do that. I want to, uh, I want to use another method, because this, is, this other method is then what you can use in this exercise four for the other representations. And uh, this other method is called saddle point method. So here, we use saddle point. And the saddle point method is, uh, is valid 
when n is equal to infinity. So essentially, I want to reproduce really the Bessel function that I obtained in perturbation theory, OK? I mean, of course, orthogonal polynomials is a much nicer thing, but it, it is. Uh, it gives you more, it gives you something which is exact in both n and lambda, but the price you have to pay is that you need to have a very particular uh, measure, right? So you have, you have to have a set of polynomials which are orthogonal with respect to the measure that, that you have in your matrix integral. And uh, here you don't need to have orthogonal polynomials, but again, you, so you, the compromise is that you have to get n to infinity. Okay, so now let's use the saddle point method and I'm going to go through the details. OK, so step one. So uh, let's, rem let's remind ourselves that we want to compute dm e minus 8 pi squared n lambda trace m squared trace now if we're in the fundamental representation, so I'm, I'm not writing the, the, the box. So this is what we want to compute. So step one, <coughs> we need to diagonalize M. And to diagonalize M is like a Fadiev Popov uh, method. So you can find details on pages. For 12, 13 of a review paper by Marcus Marino. So this is, this is quite standard. And uh, uh, so before computing, before computing the expectation value of the Wilson loop, let's just compute the, let's just compute the, the, the action. OK, so this is some generic n by n matrix. Now I put it in di into diagonal form. So I've got products over the eigenvalues, dmi. And then I got e minus 8 pi squared n over lambda sum over i mi squared. So this is the, this is the Gaussian action. And now yeah, you got this Fadiev Popov determinant, which is product i strictly less than j mi minus mj squared, which is called the van der Monde determinant. <coughs> and essentially, in, the, in, in, this, uh, in these two pages, you are going to, you are going to understand how to, compute, to, how to compute this determinant. But it's a standard computation in quantum field theory, essentially. It's a fadiev of computation. OK, so now let me rewrite this like this, products dmi. E minus n squared, an effective action of the eigenvalues mi. And the effective action mi is uh, 8 pi squared over lambda n sum over i mi squared minus 2 over n squared sum i less than j log of mi minus uh, mj. OK, so I'm just writing down this as the exponential of a log. And then I got the sum of i less than j. So now you can think of this guy. OK, this is an effective action in which you have uh, n particles called uh, n particles on the line called mi. And there is a, a, a common potential, quadratic potential well for, for all of them. So this is a common attractive potential. OK, and then you get log of 0, which gives you with a negative, which gives you a negative, uh, which gives you a, sorry, a, a repulsive, a positive, and repulsive pairwise pair potential. OK? Yes? Is there any situation where you would consider an observable, so an insertion here in the matrix model, that does not depend only on the eigenvalue? Because you have n squared variables there, right? Yes. 
to reduce, reduce to n. Yes. So you integrate it out. Yes. A bunch of yes. Which is fine for the width of the loop because the loop obviously depends only on the eigenvalues of the insertion of the width of the loop. But is there any situation that you can think of where I, I don't, you I don't insert something that depends on those variables that you integrate it out? Or I, I, don't, I don't know of an example. No, but you have an analyzed metric. So all you insert is function of your original metrics. When you have more metrics, you already have a function. Yes, but if you put an insertion that is not, that, that is not necessarily yeah, I think I think you cannot have any, anything different than that. If you're coming from gate theory, I guess gate invariance would say that the insertion is invariant with similarity of the Yeah, yeah. But uh, maybe I mean matrix models appear in other contexts. So uh, well, in other contexts, I, I don't I don't know, but I don't think it's. I think this is what you get always. Right? But anyway, so this is uh, okay. So this is an effective action. With a, with, a, with, a, with a balance between an attractive common potential and a repulsive pairwise potential. So there's going to be some equilibrium configuration. And also, so let me, uh, let me notice this, that so a sum over the eigenvalues essentially is an order, is an order n contribution. So now you have a sum here, so you get order n, which cancels with this one over n. Here you have two sums, so order n square, which cancel with this order n square. So the effective action in the n counting goes like order one. And then I got minus n squared in front of it. So n squared work like, works like one over h bar. So when n going to infinity, the other point is what contributes to this uh, to this uh, to, to this to this integral. Okay, so we want to con we, t we take n, n going to infinity, and then the saddle point is the relevant configuration that we want to get. Good. So now uh, let's see what is the equilibrium configuration. Sorry. Yes. So this is the partition function for n equals four space mu on the S four. Yes. There is no dependence. You can set it to be one without loss of generality. Does, does not be no. The, the no, no, it doesn't matter because it's a conformal theory. Oh, okay. What? The conformal. Uh, you mean computing on R4 and on VS4? Oh, that's yes. Well. It's still set to scale to Um. Okay, so now let's, comp let's, let's get the saddle point. And the saddle point you get by taking the variation equal to zero. This is 16 pi squared lambda n mi minus 2n squared <coughs> sum. Now let's write j different from i. 1 over mi minus mj. And now you have n equations. So the index i is free, goes from 1 to n. If you get any equations. I can write this in terms of some eigenvalue distribution, which is 1 over n, sum over i, from 1 to n, delta m minus mi. <clears throat> and now, when I take the continuum limit, so n equal to infinity limit is like a continuum limit. So 1 over n, sum over i of some function evaluated on mi becomes the, interval, the integral of fm rho m dm. And I got some interval here. So I, I assume that uh, m is contained in an interval. This is called the one cut solution. And uh, so rho m is, uh, is uh, different from 0 only for m in this interval. And uh, this guy is normalized to 1, so the integral rho m dm is equal to 1. OK, so this is what happens in the, in the continuum limit. <coughs> OK, so now what is the, 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 the saddle point equation? So now I want to write this guy in the continuum limit, this becomes 8 pi squared 
lambda m equal So I got this integral, but now the integral is not the total integral because j has to be different than i. So I have to, to take the principal value of the, of the integral. So this is a singular integral equation that. Uh, so I'm assuming that uh, this distribution of the eigenvalues is contained in some interval that outside of this interval is zero. So that all the eigenvalues are inside of some interval. So that, that could be that in some cases you have two intervals or three intervals. You have multi-cut solutions. In this case, yes, the solution is going to be a one-cut solution. <coughs> OK, so now this is the saddle point equation. Now step three, we have to solve this equation. And uh, the way to do it is to, well, one, one way to do it is to introduce a so-called resolvent, which is the same thing, except I don't take the principal value. So it's omega m, rho m prime, dm prime, m minus m prime without, without the, the principal value. Now I can use uh, this theorem, Sokotsky, Plemelji, whatever, so fx. So this, and a function like this, I mean, the, the, this is f of x, x plus minus i epsilon plus minus i pi f of 0, where, where epsilon goes to 0 from, from above. And uh, I can write this as 1 half f of x, x plus i epsilon dx plus f of x, x minus i epsilon dx. OK, so using this formula, I can write down <clears throat> uh, I can write down this saddle point equation like this. It's minus 1 half, yes, omega in this minus plus. So this is the saddle point equation. I'm using, I'm using this. Moreover, uh, I, I, I got some extra information about. Yes. Where is the input from the gauge theory that tells you whether that determines if you will have one cup or more than one cup? Um, well. Where do I see? Um, well, I guess in, in, this, uh, in this case, I, I would say it's, it's the natural thing to assume. I, I know of other cases in which it's also natural, uh, it's kind of natural to assume that the, the, the things decompose in blocks, and then you have more than one cut. So this is the example for some kind of higher representations in the Wilson loops. or. Like, uh, or like correlators between Wilson loops and local operators, you have these multi-cut matrix models. But OK, here, I, don't, I, I think you just, you just know that this is the solution. I, I, and, uh, or you try and it works. I, I, I don't know if I wouldn't try with a different, with a more complicated. Or maybe you can try with a more complicated things, and then you find that uh, rho is only different uh, from 0 in the, in the central cut. So probably, OK, you can write the most generic answers, but then you are going to discover applying all this uh, machinery that is going to be different from 0 only. Yes? You said that this, but by looking at the whole thing, you guess, since you are. Yes, also like, also like this. So, essentially. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Essentially, you have all, all the eigenvalues would, would like to sit here, but then there is this pairwise repulsion, so they're going to spread, and then this is one cut. It's in the potential. Yeah, so, yeah it's in the potential, yes, probably. OK, then, so you have different uh, properties. So omega is analytic um, in the M plane, except along the interval i. And then uh, you have that when m goes to infinity, 
it has to have this behavior, 1 over m, due to the normalization of the distribution of eigenvalues. And then you can use Cauchy's theorem to discover that there is another, equ another equation, which is a discontinuity equation across i, which tells you that rho of m is minus 1 over 2 pi. Now you get the same thing with the minus sign, minus omega and minus the epsilon. OK, so now we want to find, uh, we, we want to find, so what is the strategy? The strategy is that we want to find the resolvent, omega. After we have the resolvent, we can find the distribution of eigenvalues using the discontinuity equation, OK? OK, so let's, in order to find the resolvent, let's go back to the original saddle point equation. So this was my original saddle point equation. Now that there are, again, various ways to find the resolvent. The easiest one, I think, is so you multiply everything. So this is i is a free index. So there are n equations. Now let's sum over i and multiply the equation by mi minus m. So you multiply all the equation and you sum. And you take the large n limit. And this gives you, in the larger, again, you have to use that, uh, that theorem. And, uh, and you find omega m squared minus 16 pi squared over lambda m omega m plus 16 pi squared over lambda equal to 0. OK, so this is, this is the equation for the resolvent. Now it's an algebraic equation. It's a quadratic equation for omega of m. I'm almost done. Can I make it a 1 over m term here, right? That's how the derivative uh, Yes, I neglected there is some 1 over m term. Good, so now I can, uh, this is a quadratic equation. I can solve it. Omega of m is uh, 8 pi squared over lambda m. Now, again, I, I could have two different signs. But I have to pick the minus sign to guarantee uh, that this goes like 1 over m at infinity. And um, OK, so now, now, now I, got, I got from the saddle point equation, I got the resolvent. And now, if I plug the resolvent in the discontinuity equation, I find rho. OK, so now let's see. The resolvent has two pieces. It has m, which is continuous across the cut. And then there's a square root, which is not. And so uh, rho of m from this equation is minus 1 over 2 pi i, 8 pi squared over lambda. And then, OK, this is m minus, and then uh, minus the other. So then I got this discontinuity, and in total, is like this from, from this. So in total is 8 pi over lambda, lambda over 4 pi squared minus m squared. So this is the famous Wigner semicircle distribution. So it's, it's like a semicircle between um, square root of lambda over 4 pi squared and minus square root of lambda over 4 pi squared. So the eigenvalues are distributed here. OK, but OK, this was just the partition function. We wanted to compute the Wilson loop. And now there is a key observation. So now step four, I guess, of, yeah, I guess, OK. In my notes, 
Step four was using the discontinuity equation. Now step five, back to the Wilson loop. So the crucial observation, which also applies to the exercise in the, in the, in the problem set about symmetric and anti-symmetric representation, is that uh, we have, okay, so we have a trace over e to pi m. This becomes sum over i, e to, to the 2 pi m i, and this is order one in, in n. So the, what generated this distribution was the action that was order n squared, and this is now order one. So this does not back react on this guy, and uh, we can take the weakness semi circle distribution as a background, and then we can insert this guy in this background. You, there, is no, there is no deformation of a, of, a, of a distribution of eigenvalues, okay? This is also going to be true in the exercise set in which you have a symmetric and anti-symmetric representation with, with, a, with a long young tableau with order n boxes, okay? Order n is still less than order n squared, so you can also use the Wigner semicircle distribution in both computations. But then we're going to see that if you take a much bigger representation, which goes like n squared boxes in the young tableau, of course this is going to deform the original distribution of eigenvalues, and this is what corresponds to these bubbling geometries on the holographic side, and I'm going to mention them next time. But anyway, so now we want to compute this guy. And again, so the key observation, let me write it here. I'm really done. So the Wilson loop is of order one compared to the, to, to the, to, to the saddle point. that was generated by something order n squared. So we can use Wigner semicircle law. And so now we have that W circle for the fundamental representation is the integral between minus lambda over four pi squared plus square root of lambda over four pi squared rho of m e to the two pi m dm. You plug into Mathematica and you get two square root of lambda, I1 square root of lambda. So you get precisely what we got before. The Mathematica does this integral for you. Okay, so this is, uh, so let me just now, a com two comments on this, on this uh, result. So the, there is a square root of lambda, which is kind of artificial, because actually if you expand this function, this is odd in the argument, so the square root of lambda is going to cancel all the time, and this is, in fact, is going to be one plus lambda over eight plus lambda squared over one and two plus, so it's going to be an even power. I mean, it's, uh, there's not going to be uh, integer power expansion. But if you go to lambda, to infinity, so this becomes square root of two pi, lambda minus three quarters, e to the square root of lambda. Okay, so you have this, the dominant contribution at large lambda goes to e to the square root of lambda. And okay, so next time we are going to understand this behavior from holography, and I'm going to tell you how to do it, and next week I guess you're going to hear few talks about, about this correction, lambda to minus three quarters. Okay, so thanks. <laughs>